Pastor, I am sorry. I'm all you got today. He's on vacation. Something to do with Disney. Is it Disney Cruise, Disney World, Disneyland? Maybe they're watching a Disney movie at home. I'm not sure. But it's something to do with Disney. And so you're stuck with me today. I'm glad that we're here today. We're going to be talking about faithfulness. And at first, when Scott and I were talking about what I'd be talking about with you guys, you know, we're, we're in the, the perfect mix right now. We're looking at all the different ingredients that whenever you put them all in, you mix them all together, we've got a healthy church, we've got a healthy body, and things are just running smoothly. And so at first, we were talking about faith, and, and we've had a lot of sermons about faith, and faith is a great thing. Faith, I have a definition for you. Faith is a noun. It's the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. I think the majority, is, uh, majority of us in here would say that we have faith in God. And we talk a lot about what our faith in God should be. And that's a, and that's a great topic. And I was thinking I could start the whole thing off with that, that iconic scene from Indiana Jones in, is it The Last Crusade? It's, it was the film that should have been the last one, but then they went and did that other one that just wasn't any good. The Last Crusade, and he's, it's towards the end, and his father's dying because he's been shot, and he has to go across this this just complete death fall. And he has to walk across it. Have you, how many of you have seen this before? Okay. And so he, it just looks like nothing. And he says, oh, it's a step of faith. And he finally puts his leg out there. And if you've ever watched the movie, because I watched the clip recently, he puts his leg out there, but it's not like this. I mean, it's like he's a gymnast. He puts his leg like high in the air. And I'm like, man, you've been doing some stretching or something, because I can't do it like that. But he does this whole motion, and he just falls forward, and there's this great sound effect that's just... And he lands on solid ground. You know, it was just having the faith to do that. Turns out there was an optical illusion. There was something there. But as Scott and I were talking, we were like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's move away from a little bit of, of faith and let's talk about faithfulness and what God expects from us. Okay? So if, if faith is the complete trust or confidence in someone or something, faithfulness is the quality of being faithful or fidelity. God desires his church to be faithful. God desires you to be faithful. But it's getting harder and harder in this culture. And let me tell you why. You see, in our culture today, we are taught that if we can be faithful and it serves us, if it feels good, if it feeds the flesh, then that's okay. But if us, by remaining faithful, somehow would not feed our flesh, would not feel good to us, then we have the ability to go do whatever we want. We don't have to be faithful anymore. And that's kind of our culture. You know, the, the Nike slogan. What's the Nike slogan? Just do it. You know, if it feels good, if it fits, let's just make it happen. But God has called us to a life of faithfulness. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, she was once asked, how do you measure the success of your work? She looked puzzled for a moment. She replied, I don't remember that the Lord ever spoke of success. He spoke only of faithfulness and love. This is the only success that really counts. I ran an article titled Letters in the Sand. This is a compilation of letters written by military personnel to family and friends to the states during the Gulf War. One was written by Marine Corporal Preston Coffer. He told a friend, quotes, we were, we're talking about the Marines here, not the Boy Scouts. We all joined the service knowing full well what we might be asked to do, what was expected of us. He signed off with the Marine motto, Semper Fi, short for Semper Fidelis, which is Latin for always faithful. See, we can't forget, just like the Marines who signed up back then in a time of peace that were called to a time of war, hey, he said, we're not the Boy Scouts. We know exactly what we were signing up for. And we as Christians, if you ex have accepted the love of Jesus Christ in your life and say, I want that stamp on me, I want to be labeled a Christ follower, you have submitted to the fact that God has called all Christians to be faithful. So we can't remember what we have signed up for. God expects us to be faithful in everything that we do. In, in fact, the Bible says in Galatians, when it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, we are supposed to be faithful at all times. It says that through the Spirit working in us, that Christians will produce love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the fruits of the Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is working through you, that's what should be coming out of you. Faithfulness. Noah was a very faithful man. Yes? 
Anybody? I was thinking about people in the Bible. Who is faithful? When you're, a, when you're little, you hear the story of Noah, and, and it's a cool story. I mean, how many of you remember the story of Noah? And it was just a really fun story because you got all the animals, you got the drama, you got the, the hurricane winds and the rain and all this, and it was just a really cool story. But when you go back and look at it as an adult and you see what it took to go from nothing to an ark is amazing to me. Let's think about this for a second. Let me give you some, some information about the ark. Um, how many of you know how long a football field is? Okay, it's 100 yards. There's three feet in a yard, so it's, come on, 300 feet. Good job. Some of you are like, I'm not sure of my math here. Kind of scared to say it. 300 feet. The ark was one and a half times the length of a football field. Okay? That's long. It's 450 feet for those of you that, that are still struggling with in the math department. All right, I got these facts ahead of time so I wouldn't have to think in front of you. So I look smarter. Okay, one and a half times the length of a football field. That is how long it was. And, and it was wide. And it was tall. You know how many square feet? There's smarter people than I am. They've done the research on this. They looked at you know, how long it was, how wide it was, how many levels there were. Anybody take a guess how many square feet we had? Over 100,000 square feet. That's not impressive, I guess, to you guys. It was impressive to me. Come on, who thinks 100,000 square feet? That's a lot of square feet inside this thing. Now, let me tell you, when you look at Noah before the ark and Noah after the ark, you're like, wow, man, God really used him in a mighty way. But let me tell you, Noah was not faithful because he built an ark. That's not why Noah was faithful. Noah was faithful because every day... He got up and he did the small things. What were the small things? Man, he would gather wood. He'd put those small pieces of wood together. He would train up his sons. He would teach his sons. He would motivate his sons. He would talk to his God through prayer. He would go to bed. He would get up and he would gather more wood. And with his sons, he would put those pieces of wood together over and over again for roughly about 100 years. Faithfulness is not the big, huge end result. Faithfulness are all the little things that it takes to get there. Noah was a very faithful man. And God has called us to be faithful. So let's dig in here and see why God wants us to be faithful. Well, number one, I believe that faithfulness brings us under the protective hand of God. When we are doing what God has called us to do, we are naturally in the protection of God. I got a verse for you. This is in Psalms chapter 31, 23 through 24. It says, love the Lord, all of you godly ones, for the Lord protects those who are loyal to him, but he harshly punishes the arrogant. So be strong and courageous, all of you who put your hope in the Lord. Let's back up just a second. The Lord protects those that are loyal to him, that are faithful to him. But it goes beyond that. It says, you know, so, so, so one, have the courage to be faithful because I'm going to protect you, God says. But when it says be strong and courageous, to me that speaks to our attitude in life and the way that we're to be faithful. We shouldn't drag our feet. Oh, what are you doing over there? I'm being faithful. I've got to be faithful. No. The Bible says be strong and courageous in your response to God, in the way that we should be faithful. Faithfulness, number two, faithfulness brings an increase in authority and promotion within the kingdom. Now, before I go any further, we're going we're to pause for a second, because, yeah, I'm talking about when you are faithful, that most likely you will be promoted in the kingdom, you will have more responsibilities. But let me get one thing clear. We are not faithful to attain position. I am not faithful because I want to, people to look up at me. I am not faithful because of the gift that God will give me if I am faithful. I'm faithful because God told me to be faithful. I'm faithful out of obedience to him. James Hearn and I were talking this last weekend. We had the, uh, the youth sponsors over for a meal at the house. We had a really good time. And we were talking about salvation and how sometimes the church will try to encourage someone to come to Christ and say, hey, come to Jesus so you can go to heaven. And while heaven is an amazing, wonderful 
place that is real and that God said he is going to gift us with, it is not the reason that we come to Christ. We come to Christ out of obedience to him because he is God and he has made us and he has called us to him. That's why we come to Christ and he is faithful and he lavishes us with gifts because he loves us and he wants to give us heaven. He wants to give us eternity with him. But we don't be faithful just so we can get all these nice things. Let me tell you, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 45 through 47, it says, A faithful, sensible servant is one whom the master can give responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth. The master will put the servant in charge of all that he owns. Do you hear that? So we have, this, we have this servant. It says a good servant, a faithful servant, is one that when the master leaves, he can say, hey, I want you to make sure that everything in the household stays the way it should, that you take care of. We've got the Holy Spirit playing the drums. That's cool. That's cool. Hey, play on if you want to. Okay, we're good. We're good. Sometimes it does that. It's, it's, buddy, how long has it been doing that for? Yeah, sometimes... There's some really funny noises on there. There's one when you hit it and it goes, yeah, yeah. And I've always really wanted to like say something powerful and then the drums are like, yeah, yeah. You know, that would be cool. This time I just got the boom, but you know, that's okay. That's okay. So we're talking about this servant and we're talking about the master that can trust his servant in the small things. Hey, I'm leaving and I want you to take care of the household. I want you to take care of my other servants. Make sure they eat right. Make sure they don't throw any parties, do anything too crazy. Can you do that for me? Yes, sir, I can. He goes, he comes back and guess what? Everything's okay. The servants have been fed. The house is in order. And the servant comes back and he says, man, I am so thankful that you did this small thing for me. I'm going to put you in charge of so much more. And that's what God wants to do in your life. You see, God has given you this much, and he says, hey, let me, let me see what you do with this, because I've got more to give you. Okay, so we've all heard the story of the talents, the parable of the talents. We have, we have the master who gives five talents to this person. He gives three talents to this person, and he gives one talent to this person. And the person that was given five, they go out and they invest that five, and they turn that five into ten Okay, the person that was given three, they take that three, they invest it, they, they do good things with it, and they come back with three more. Now they have six. And the person with one, they're like, wow, God gave me this. This is, this is great. I'm going to dig a hole and put it in the ground. Okay, so they dig a hole, they put it in the ground, they cover it up. Now it's safe and no one can touch it. Fantastic. And then the master comes home and he says, hey, tell me about what you got. And the one with five said, Master, I've taken what you have given me, and I've increased that, and I've turned it into ten. And let me tell you what the Bible says, what the Master would say to them. Verse 21 of Matthew 25. The Master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling the small amount, so I will give you many more responsibilities. You have been faithful in the small amount, and I will give you more responsibilities. I believe that God has gifted every single person, every single Christ follower, everyone that says, God, I will follow you. I believe he gives you gifts and abilities and talents that will be used for his kingdom. And he wants you to take these that he has given you, and he wants you to grow them and invest them and watch them grow. That's what he wants you to do with him. And when you do that, he will look at you and say, you have been faithful, and now I'm going to give you more. Guys, we can't take what God gives us and dig it in the sand, because if you don't know that part, he says, you wicked servant, I've never known you. When God gives you something, he expects you to be faithful in growing that and making it better and better, all for his glory and for his kingdom. Okay, so now we know that we should be faithful. We know kind of what God expects of us faithful-wise, but in what areas of our lives are we actually supposed to be faithful in, and how do we do that? Well, I've written up just a few, and I'm going to be honest. When I talked to Scott, my original thing that I wrote out, it was probably like five or six pages long, and I care for you, so we cut it down a lot. Okay, I was like, Scott, we could, we could turn this into a sermon series just completely by itself. And he, and he agreed, but it's just this Sunday, so we cut it down a lot. But here are some areas 
that I feel that God has called us to be faithful in. And if we as a church will be faithful in these, I believe that not only you and your household are going to be blessed, but this church is going to be blessed. Because we as this church have been called to be faithful to God. All right, so how can we be faithful? Let's talk about at home. Number one, the easiest one, husbands and wives. We talked earlier about how in this culture it's a little bit different because we're saying, yeah, faithfulness is fantastic unless it doesn't feed my personal wants and desires right here, right now. But God has called you to faithfulness. I don't have all the verses up on the screen because I didn't want to put too many for you. But in Ephesians, God says, a man must love his wife and a, and a wife is to respect her husband. It's this, it's this beautiful thing. And, I, and we've talked about this in our small group marriage class before. But for some reason, us guys, we love to be respected. Is that correct? If, if we don't get respect, we aren't having a good day. And that's not just from wives, but from the world. Is that correct? Am I the only one? There are other guys out there that like respect. And then ladies, you love to be loved, don't you? No, no one? No ladies. This lady, Julie Thomas, likes to be loved. You see, God knows us. He made us. And he says, look, hey, I want you to remain faithful in your marriages. I want you to, and that's not just talking about fidelity. That's not just talking about not breaking the, the, the marriage promise. But it's talking about being faithful as the best husband that you can be, guys. Ladies, it's talking about being the best wives that you can be. Being faithful in that. Parents, oh man. Guys, this one, this one, if we don't get a hold of this, we're going to be in big trouble. God has called our parents to be parents. I know that sounds like, whoa, that was big. Wow. He called parents to be parents. Now listen to this. God has gifted you with children. Those are from God. You may think, well, I had a hand in it. No, you didn't. Okay. You had no hand in it whatsoever, okay? God is the one who placed that child in the womb. God is the one who grew that baby, who at the spark of that baby coming out, that it takes its first breath. Okay, science can't figure that out because God does it. God is the one who gifts us with our children. And let me tell you, and I'm speaking to me just as much as I'm speaking to you, parents, we are relying on the church for what is our job. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe that the church has a mighty role in our children's lives, but I also believe that you and me as parents, we have a great and powerful role in our children's lives. It is our job to raise them up in instruction. It is our job to discipline. It is our job to teach them about the word of God, to disciple them. That is our job. And so often, including me, we let the church do it because it's so convenient. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands because it would probably be a little bit sad. But if I said, how many of you parents have a daily Bible study with our kids? There wouldn't be a lot of hands. And if there were, if I said, okay, okay, maybe we can get more. If I said, how many have us a weekly Bible study? How, how good are we doing on discipline? How good are we doing on these things? Guys, we need to be faithful in what God has given us. Don't get me wrong. The church has a mighty, mighty role in this. But we're not the only spiritual influence in our kids' lives. Us parents have to be more faithful in how we are doing this. Kids, you're not going to get off the hook. You're like, yeah, mom and dad, you got to be more faithful than me. That's right. No, kids, all right, I'm going to talk to you for a second. You ready for this? Okay. Your school is your mission ground. Probably the greatest mission ground that you will ever see in your life. You will be surrounded by more students, by more people that do not know Christ than you will ever be surrounded in your entire life. And a lot of you have bought into the lie that God has a mighty plan for my life when I graduate college. And I'm going to tell you right here, right now, that that is a lie from the devil, that God has a plan for you right here, right now, every day, sitting next to that stinky person in class with your teacher that you don't like, that you feel grades your papers unfairly, God has you there for a reason. Because of your talents, your gifts, he has a purpose for you, and he is calling you to be faithful in that. Oh, I feel that God's calling me to the mission field. I feel that God wants me to do this. I feel that God wants me to do that. But these, the opportunities aren't waking up, and I, you know, I can't get there. Have you been faithful in the small things? 
Because if we are not talking to the students in our hallways, if we're not talking to the teachers, if we are not exuding Christ through the fruits of our spirit, then why would we do it in another country if we can't do it at home? So we've got to be faithful where God puts us. You may not like where God has you right now. You may not like your job. You may not like your school. You may not like your family sometimes. But guess what? God has put you there for a reason. He says, be faithful. Be faithful. You're better than a drum. Man. In your personal life, in your relationship with Jesus, we are called to be faithful in our relationship with Jesus. In Luke chapter 9, 23, it talks about taking up our cross daily. That means dying to our old self every day. I wake up, I want to go play video games with my son today. Now that's not what God has for me today. Maybe I have to die to my wants and my desires. Maybe that's okay sometimes. But you know what? Day to day, you have to get up and you have to die to yourself. Take up your cross daily and say, God, lead me. I am your servant. You have to be faithful in your relationship with Jesus. In the ministry that God has given you. Hey, you know what? The ministries that are really easy to see in the church are the ones like you know, we got, we got the youth pastor and the worship pastor and the pastor. And then you can see certain people in the church that, that do a lot of work. You have, you have Jim in the back that's like the, the most handy man in the world. He should have his own show on Discovery Channel. And it's easy to see those ministries. And then other, other people, sometimes you can kind of sit back and say, I don't have a spot. I don't have a place to serve. Let me tell you, God has a place for you to serve. God has a way for you to serve. Okay. I've heard a church recently, they were telling me that we have, we have some, some older people in our church that they can't get out and they can't do as much as they used to. So you know what they do? You know what their ministry is? There's a list of, of new people that come to their church and they write a personal handwritten note to each one of them. An encouragement of, hey, we're glad you're here. And that's awesome. Hey, I don't know what your ministry is. I know that, that all of us should have a way that we're able to help serve and further the kingdom. If you need help finding that, man, come to somebody. Come to someone that you see serving and say, hey, how can I get involved? We have a food bank once a month. It's a great way to get involved. Buy into that. Be faithful in the ministry that God has given you and then let that grow. Another way in our personal life that we should be faithful, kingdom building. We can't forget that before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave us what's called the Great Commission. He said, therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to, be, to obey all my commands that I have given them. How many of us, don't raise your hand, how many of us have been faithful in growing the kingdom of God? That's, that's a big thing. But faithfulness is every day when you have the opportunity, when you're at Walmart checking out and the lady says, how are you doing? Most of us would be like, I'm fine. Thanks. You have the chance to say, man, it's a blessed day. I'm so glad to be here today. How are you doing? Uh, work's tough. I'd rather not be here right now. You know, you have an opportunity to share your joy, to share your love, to share your enthusiasm. Remember, be strong and courageous we got to be faithful in the way that we treat people and not take any situation for granted and further the kingdom. God has called us to be faithful in that. Responsibilities. Here's, here's a really, really fun one. How many of you absolutely love where you work? <laughs> okay. Probably about 10, maybe 15%. The rest of you, how many of you work so you don't starve? Okay, the rest of you kind of like, I don't know, I don't work, I just quit my job today. Okay, <laughs> it's tough to be somewhere and not enjoy it. You know, oh, I don't want to be here. Kids, you're in class, oh, I don't want to be here, I'm never going to use this before, never ever in my life, I'm never going to use it. Partly true. But every once in a while, I'm like, oh, that's why that made sense. Okay, check this out. Colossians 3.23, if you don't know this verse, if, if you don't memorize scripture, I'm going to challenge you to memorize this scripture because this scripture is going to help you a lot. Colossians 3.23, it says, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for other people. Oh, I hate my mouth. 
can't stand him. He makes me do all this stuff, stay late. He gets to go do all these fun things, and I get to stay here and staple this and lick this envelope, and I hate my boss. God says, hey, do it for me. Do it as if, as if I ask you to do it, not as if he asks you to do it. Do it willfully and joyfully. And if you do those things, when you do the small things, something amazing can happen. Luke 16.10 says, if you're faithful in the little things, you'll be faithful in the large things. But if you are dishonest in the little things, you will be dishonest in the greater things. I wonder how God is speaking to you today, how he's tugging at your heart. What areas of your life, what areas of my life do we need to be more faithful in? Remember, faith is the complete trust in something or someone. God wants to have a complete trust in you. He wants to know that when he speaks that you will respond faithfully. So think about it. What is it in your life that you need to be more faithful in? That's hard. That's really hard. See, a lot of us, we want the more authority, we want the better job, we want the the higher position, but we don't want to do what it takes to get there. And the Bible says very clearly in Luke, look, do the little things, and I'm going to give you some bigger things. Now, some of you, you're tired of waiting. How many of you have felt like, I've been faithful so long, I haven't seen seen anything happen? That's tough. We can be faithful because God is faithful. We've seen it demonstrated in our lives. I was so blessed that I grew up in a, in a family with a mom and a dad that loved each other so much. You can ask Samantha, for the first part of our relationship before there were kids, I don't think there was ever a time that I missed opening the door for my wife at, when we were at the car. Kids blow everything up and nothing works anymore. <laughs> Because then you're opening the, the door for them. But I saw that modeled in my life. I saw my dad adore my mom and respect her in that way. God has been faithful to us and promises to continue to be faithful to us. So we can do it because we've seen it modeled. The verse in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is faithful. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his command. That's our God. He's faithful. God calls us to be faithful. You say, I have to be faithful my entire marriage? The whole 50, 60, maybe 70 years we're going to be together, I have to be faithful. God's the one who is faithful and said, I made this promise, and I'm going to be faithful for eternity. Unfailing, perfect, faithful. Some of you are tired, and you're saying, I've been faithful, and I just have not seen it. I don't know where God's leading me. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I've got got the verse for you. This is 2 Peter Chapter 3, verse 9. Listen to this. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but he is patient towards you, not wishing that anyone should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Keep going. If you're being faithful and you feel... I don't see God working in my life. I don't see him doing what I think that he should be doing. The Lord is not slow as some people count him as slow, it says. It says that he's patient towards us and he's wishing that none of us should perish, that all of us should reach salvation. I'm going to tell you the truth. I believe this. I believe that God cares more about our eternal existence with him in heaven than he does about our mortal, physical existence bodies. And sometimes on this earth, we are going to go through trials and we're going to go through tribulation and we're going to have pain in this life. But remain faithful. 
Because when God looks at us, he's looking at the big picture. He's looking at what's going to lead us to repentance. What's going to lead us to him. What's going to lead the ones around us to him. God's called us to be faithful. If you would, bow your head and we're going to pray. God, thank you so much for today. God, you've called us to faithfulness. And it's so easy to say that, but it is so hard to do it because you ask us to get up every day to die to ourselves and to do what you have called us to do day after day, every moment. Just like Noah, getting up, getting the wood together, investing in the sons that you gave me, being the husband that you called me to be, praying to you and talking to you every day for over a hundred years. God, if Noah can be faithful, then surely we can be faithful in all that you've given us as parents, as friends, as husbands, as wives, as a church. God, I ask that you release your spirit in us, that you inspire us to be a faithful people to each other and to you so that the world looks at us, they see something different than what the world preaches, than what the world offers, that they see something fresh, something beautiful. God, in all of us, you have called us to be faithful, and in some of us, we are lacking in very serious ways. And I ask right now that you put your hand on our heart and you let us know what it is in our lives that we need to be more faithful in. God, convict us. Change us. God, we knew what we were signing up for when we came to you and we surrendered our hearts to you. God, we know that you're never going to leave us. God, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning, if you're new to Christ, if you've been coming for a while and you say, you know what? I like this church. I like where they're going. I like... I like what what God is doing in this body, and I want to be a part of that body. This is your time. You can come up and you can say, hey, I want to commit to be faithful to this church. I want to commit to to grow its young people. If that's you, you can come up whenever we sing. Maybe, Maybe you've been hearing about this Jesus guy for a long time, and you have never submitted your life. You have always wanted to do what felt good to you. You've always wanted to do what fed the flesh. And today you feel God knocking on your heart saying, I have something better for you. If that's you, come up. If you don't want to come up here, you can go back here. We have people that will talk to you. Whoever you are, however God's speaking to you, you have the freedom today to make that choice, to make that decision that can change your life forever. You would stand and sing with